I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, next thing I'm going to be opening up this power supply to have a look inside of it. This is a uh, chickeny, if that's how you pronounce the uh, brand name. It's made for HP, and it came out of a really, um, I'd say, borderline piece of crap a, um, desktop computer. <laughs> um, this thing was specced to provide the needed power for the stock system and only that. Same goes for connectivity. Yeah, you could you you could actually plug up a. Uh, you could plug up a second hard drive if you wanted to this thing, but that's about it. Because you only get a standard 24-pin power supply connector, a 4-pin CPU power connector, two standard SATA power connectors, as well as this 5-volt SATA power connector for the little laptop DB drive that was in this computer. That's all you get for power connectors on this thing, and all the wiring is 20 gauge. Now, generally, you want the wiring to be uh, 18 gauge at least, but I've seen I've seen quite a few OEM um, supplies with with the uh, thinner wire, and it's and usually usually you'll find the thinner wire in really cheap end supplies um, that you'll find on, like Newegg and sites like that, but. Let's go ahead and have a look at the uh, specs on this thing. So you get a more or less. Uh, <laughs> this thing is not active PFC. Um, it's only standard efficiency because of that. It, you, obviously, it, had, it would have to be uh, 80 plus. I mean, in order for it to be 80 plus, it had to be a uh, active power factor correction unit. So, this chickeny apparently is a uh, sub brand of Hypro, which um, Hypro, um, their units are pretty decent. Um, sometimes they do have issues with capacitors. Now, the thing with Hypro is their units they tend to be able to provide more power than what they are actually spec for. I've got at least one Hypro uh, HP. D3057F3R, so HP-D3057F3R. It's a 300 watt supply that was that was uh, included in some HP computers back around 2005, 2006, that time period. And it was a it was a seriously um, um it was a seriously overbuilt 300 watt unit. Um, it was spec for 300 watts, but um, there was a uh, review site, I think it was Hardware Insights, one of those who test power supplies. They were actually able to pull 400 watts out of the thing without too many issues. I mean, it would start to get hot, but <laughs> it would it would do 400 watts. So, just to give you an idea. So, the, the rings on this thing, and of course, you've probably already seen them by now, but uh, this thing has two 12 volt rails, 12 volt A. Does up to 7 amps, 12 volt B does up to 10 amps, minus 12 volt 0 0.3, plus 3.3 .3 volt 12 amps, plus 5 or plus 5.08. Uh, standby 1.5 amps, and that's even lower than what you usually see. Normally, normally the 5 volt standby rail is 2 amps. And the, and the 5 volt rail is a whopping 10 amps. Now, in newer power supplies like this, the 5 volt rail is typically a lower spec rail, which is a huge difference from power supplies from around the early 2000s, where most of the power was intended to be delivered through the 5 volt rail. That was till the Pentium 4 came out. So, max output power 180 watts at 50 degrees Celsius. 50 degrees Celsius is a pretty is a pretty hot case temperature. I would say I'm I'm, a, I'm assuming that's what they're referring to. But uh, we're gonna have a look inside this thing to see exactly how well it's built. 
Now, on the exterior, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> like the thin wiring, the uh, poor, the, the poor choice of, of connectors, the uh, thin casing, stamp steel, you name it. But let's go ahead and crack it open. So this is a D180R003L. I think that was the. Uh... Now that's different from the model number listed here. There's the model number right there. That's probably HP's model number for this thing. Who knows? Okay. Let's go ahead and open it up. And pop the zip tie. Now I have to say, um, once that once we're inside, things do look, look a little bit better. I mean, there's not a whole lot there because, I mean, this is just 180 watts. <laughs> but, um, I do have to give it some credit for being at least decently built for 180 watts. So, let's get you a close up look. So, the, uh, EMI filtering stage starts really early in this one, like right next to the AC plug. You can see we have two X caps, we have two coils, we have two Y caps on the uh, on the plug as well as two extra Y caps on the uh, circuit board along with the uh, fuse. Get a flashlight to help help you see a little better. We have a bridge rectifier. And we have a voltage selection switch. That's because this thing uses a this thing employs an older style voltage double circuit. So for those in North America who run on 120 volts, this thing employs a voltage double circuit to get a uh, it's about um, I guess about 340 volts DC. You can it's rectified 120 volts. It's usually about 170 volts, something like that. And past that, you have two good size MOVs or varistors for surge protection. We have 560 microfarad caps in the primary. There's two in this one because it's a old older style unit. So 560 microfarads is not too bad for for a unit of this wattage. Uh, usually I'll see um, like a lot, in a lot of the older OEM supplies usually you would see uh, 680 to 560 microfarads for a 300 watt unit so that's pretty decent there. And past that we have some resistors I'm not sure what they're for. Now these things usually do have bleeder resistors um, for bleeding off uh, charge in the primary caps. Now let me see if I can tell what this main switcher has on it. It's kind of hard to really see for sure. I don't want to disassemble this thing. Um, although it's kind of low in spec, I kind of actually want to return it to service and see what it's capable of doing. Yeah, believe it or not. Um, what I might actually do is I might add some connectors to this thing and just throw it into something to see how it does. And, uh, have your main transformer and your 5 volt standby transformer there and there and over here we have our secondary now here's when things get a little more interesting um, I apologize, things are kind of hard to see here. Um, trying to get an opportunity to look at this thing myself. Trying to determine 
the uh, what's rectifying the 12 volts over here. On the left, we have a 30A45CT. So that might that part might be good for 30 amps. <laughs> I'd have to look up the I'd have to look up the uh, the model to see for sure. To the right of that, we have the the text on these things can be so hard to read. Okay, I can't. Unfortunately, I cannot make up the part number of the second of the uh, second um, rectifier. I'd, I would have to tear this thing apart to get all the information, which I'm not going to do um, because I kind of want to return this thing to service in some sort of manner. Um, not sure what I use it for, but let's see what this third one over here is for. Now, I want to say the first two on the right over here, perhaps they're for a 12 volt duties that'd be my best guess now this uh, this other part on the uh, which is on its, uh, on its own separate heat sink is a P40NF03L it looks like an at sign next to that not sure what that's for. Okay, so now that I've gotten part number, let's get you a better look. Yeah, what's well, over here on this side? They do have decent heat sinks on the secondary. I think the primary they could have done a little better job. Not much of a heat sink there, just a just a like a metal plate. Power supply PCB is dated uh year twenty fourteen, September twenty sixth. So while this power supply um now I'm I am saying that the power supply is pretty well built for its wattage. However, um this would, seeing a unit like this, um, what, I want, what I mean to say is a unit like this you would expect to see in probably 2001 with the exception of where the output um, current is mostly going to. I mean this thing is not 5 volt heavy, but seeing units like this, I mean this is, this is the kind of build quality I would see in something that was made in like 2001. I mean, this thing was made in 2015. There's no reason for this thing to be... Um, well, 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 I mean to say, there's no reason this thing should not have modern stuff like active PFC and stuff like that. But what it is, is HP decided to cheap out and go with this instead. And that's, that's kind of ridiculous. Um, <laughs> I mean... Like I say, for 180 watts, it's... I mean, it's built decent for that but um, I just find it appalling to see this kind of uh, design of a this is it's appalling to see this in a, in a 2015 computer now I want to see try to make out what we have for a bridge rectifier in this thing it's a GBU 608 so I want to say it's probably a 6 amp bridge which they chose, they chose a decent bridge for this. Um, I mean, I see, I've seen a lot of uh, 250 watt units with 4 amp bridge rectifiers in them. And, uh, yeah, like I say, it's just... Overall, I mean, it's just a clean built unit. Um, capacitor choice is, is okay. Um... Yeah, we, we. I mean, we've got a, we've got Samsung uh, Samsung capacitors in here, as well as uh, LTEC and a couple of there's a TPO in there too. Reminds me of what I would see in a uh, in a Delta power supply. And right there, I can see it or not. Let me pick this back up. 
And right there is the make and model. So that's the actual model of this thing. I think it was on that sticker we had seen earlier. And if you look at the bottom of this thing, I'd say really clean. And it's got this cover covering all the high voltage parts of the power supply. So very that's a very smart that's a very smart move there, I think. Um, it helps insulate all the high voltage components of the supply. Helps isolate and insulate them away from the uh, low voltage section. So this I think that's pretty cool. But I uh, yeah. I have mixed opinions on this thing. I think just for fun, and I will probably keep this power supply in my own collection. What I might do is, uh, <laughs> I may end up adding some more wires to this thing. Like, I'm, I may add in a couple more SATA connectors and maybe a Molex, a 4-pin Molex or two, because it simply has done, has none at all. Um, I might add some of those into this and <laughs> put this in a, in, a, in a bigger system to see how it does. Maybe, maybe an older system won't really care about. See if it can see if it uh see if it shuts off or does anything crazy. And also see if the voltage is staying spec. That'd be cool. But yeah, that is a look inside this power supply. Now the uh, the brand chickeny, um, I'm not really faulting them for this. I think this, I think for 180 watts, this is a pretty well built unit, despite it not being active power factor correction. Um, being built to kind of an older standard. Um, but, when when the company orders it a certain way, you make it a certain way. I mean, what can I say? It's just like with FSP. Um, like a lot of the units I see sold on Newegg made by FSP. Are pretty stout units, but yet some of these I've seen tossed into Acer computers. Like uh, this FSP that I'm running right now on this computer, um, not quite up, not quite up to the same standard. Although not terrible by any means. So, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that's it for this video, but don't forget, there's a lot more interesting stuff on the channel to check out. Also, if this is your first time visiting this channel, feel free to subscribe to keep your channel, and also don't forget to tick the bell so that we will get notified of new video posts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, but if you really didn't like it, there is the alternative option available as well. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, CubeComp MTDX. There you'll find videos about bicycling, weather, elevator tours, and all sorts of other neat interesting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to come back and thank you for your support.